What would happen if Yurichi was born in Tanjiro's era and became his dad? How would this change the entire history of Demon Slayer? Well, after a lot of research, we've prepared three scenarios ranked from the least to most likely to happen. Starting off with what is least likely to happen if Yurichi was Tanjiro's father. In this scenario, Yurichi will be born in Tanjiro's era, meaning the breathing styles wouldn't have existed. For the sake of the story, let's also assume that his brother, Michikatsu, didn't exist. So in this time without breathing styles, how would they fight demons? Well, if there were no breathing styles, meaning the demon slayers just use Nirichin swords to duke it out with the demons. So Yurichi will have a fighting style that will most probably revolve around the use of the Wisteria Flower and the Nichiren Blade. Techniques that are proven useful even without the use of breathing techniques. So what do the other demon slayers have in his arsenal now that breathing styles are gone? Well, as mentioned before, they will still have Nichiren Blades and Wisteria Flowers. However, demon slayers like Yurichi and the Hashiras can have access to Demon Slayer Mark and the transparent world so they could still put up a fight. Going back to Yurichi, even with the power of the breathing techniques, Yurichi is a super skilled swordsmith so he wouldn't have a problem killing demons and would likely dedicate his time fighting them. So what'll happen next? Well, in the course of his journey, however, he falls in love and creates a family of his own, which then turns out to be Tanjiro's family in the main storyline. With Tanjiro as his son, he'll be born with the demon slayer mark, so right now he's no longer Tanjiro Kamado, but Tanjiro Tsukugini. After after creating a family, what would Yurichi plan on doing? Well, Yurichi would then retire and raise his family because it was mentioned in one of the manga chapters that he wanted to live a peaceful life. Even after retirement, Yurichi will still guide and train Tanjiro, propelling him to be an unrivaled demon slayer with unparalleled skills. But does the story just end there? Well, amidst the peace, however, the chaos sticks around. Muzan, the demon king, envious of the demon slayer's newly found peace, kills his family including Nezuko and Yurichi himself leaving Tanjiro as a sole survivor. Devastated by the loss of his family, Tanjiro seeks vengeance against Muzan, the demon king responsible for their deaths. Determined to become stronger, he embarks on a journey to find any means necessary to defeat Muzan and avenge his loved ones. While finding revenge, how can Tanjiro become stronger? Well, during one of his many battles, Tanjiro would stumble upon the power of his demon slayer mark, giving him the ability to see beyond the transparent world. There, he discovers the existence of a powerful technique known as Total concentration breathing. But will this be enough? Well, total concentration breathing alone can't defeat Muzan, but Tanjiro then utilizes this to create the first breathing style, the sun breathing technique. As we all know, the sun breathing technique mimics the sun and replicates it to the user's movements, techniques, and abilities. With the burning desire for revenge, Tanjiro decides to continuously perfect sun breathing techniques and the 12 forms. Guided by the teachings left behind his father, he undergoes intense training to unlock his full potential. With each passing day, Tanjiro Tanjiro's skills and determination to grow, and he begins to surpass the limits of ordinary demon slayers. Tanjiro's battles against demons reach a whole new level. Demons tremble in fear as Tanjiro's sword cuts through them like a scorching ray of sunlight. Throughout his journey, Tanjiro encounters numerous demons and fellow demon slayers. His skills combined with the compassionate nature earn him the respect and admiration of his allies whom he teaches the various alterations of the sun breathing technique. And how will this affect the story? Well, since Tanjiro taught the others sun breathing, they they will then use this knowledge to create the five fundamental breathing styles. Flame, water, stone, wind, and thunder. The demon slayer's strength will increase, and now, they could fight back efficiently against the demons. As Tanjiro power grows, his technique evolves, allowing him to unleash devastating attacks that obliterate even the strongest of demons. Tanjiro becomes a beacon of hope for all demon slayers, inspiring them to push their limits and fight against the demons that plague their world. But, will that be enough to send Muzan's head flying off? Ultimately, Tanjiro is relentless pursuit of vengeance leads him to a climactic battle with Muzan. Using the full power of the sun breathing technique, he engages in an epic duel against the Demon King. In this fight, he uses everything in his arsenal, including the transparent world, the Demon Slayer Mark, and the Red Nichiren Blade. In a final desperate attempt to defeat Tanjiro, Muzan unleashes all of his demonic power together with his minions. Will Tanjiro lose after training so hard? Well, Tanjiro's determination and strength prevail. With a decisive strike, he pierces through Muzan's head, putting an end to the Demon King's reign of terror once and for all. With his mission complete, at the very age, the breathing techniques see their golden era where they also see their end. But why is that? Well, essentially, if Muzan is defeated, the Demon Slayers have nothing to do. All the Demon Slayers disband and Tanjiro's name will be written in history as a legendary hero who saved mankind from the Demon King Muzan. But what if Yurichi meets Muzan early on and manages to kill him before the Demon King manages to lay a finger on his family? Well, it's probably gonna be a short but satisfying 
scenario, finishing the story with only one episode. Well, it is Yurichi we're talking about, so it's completely understandable. This version of the story gives the viewer somewhat of a glimpse as to what would happen if you arrived in episode 1. And if you are curious about what would happen if you got on time, then check out this video right here. So back to the main thing we've been talking about. How would this story start? Well, in this scenario, everything that happened to Yurichi's life remains the same except when he met Yuta, his wife. And Michikatsu doesn't exist again. But what will happen with Yuta? Well, in this scenario, Yuta wasn't killed by demons. And since she wasn't killed, this led to Yurichi and Yuta being able to have a family. Yuta gave birth to Tanjiro, Nezuko, Takeo, Hanako, Shigeru, and Rokuta. Together, they become a happy family, one that Yurichi always wanted with Yuta. Now, in the main series, Yuta's death was a reason he became a demon slayer. But why would he even become one now that Yuta's alive? Well, Yurichi would encounter demons that try to attack him while he's walking up the mountains at night. He'll luckily be saved by the demon slayers he met in the main series. After this, Yurichi decided that he would join the demon slayer corps to protect his family and keep everyone safe. Yurichi would proceed to create and perfect the first ever breathing technique, utilize the transparent world, and learn the secrets of his demon slayer mark. He would be proclaimed as one of the Hashiros and regarded as the strongest demon slayer. By then, Yurichi decides to prioritize being a demon slayer over being a father to his family in order to protect them and everyone else, which would make Tanjiro as a sort of father figure of his family while Yurichi is away. So where would the story go now? Well, the plot changes when Yurichi decides to go home and visit his family. He stumbles upon Muzan who is searching for Yurichi because he gained Muzan's interest with his sun breathing technique. Muzan was still on the hunt for Yubashiki without being careful at this time because remember, before Yurichi, there were no breathing techniques, so Muzan was afraid of nothing. What would happen to Yurichi's family? Well, Muzan's bloodlust oozes all over the place, and so Yurichi decides to take this fight way more seriously than how he fought other demons. Muzan, however, does not sense any danger whatsoever from Yurichi, since Yurichi is always relaxed and has always shown reserved expressions, making it hard for people and demons to anticipate Yurichi's feelings and his next move. The outcome does not change here for Muzan, though, as Yurichi is still able to defeat him instantly by completing the 12 sword forms of the sun breathing technique, slicing Muzan in half and severing both of his arms and slicing his neck. Muzan is shocked by this and is wondering why he can't regenerate quickly, making Muzan fear for his life for the first time. But why can't Muzan regenerate? Well, it's all thanks to the Red Nichiren Blade, where in the main series, even when it was used by Hashiras like Giyome and Sanami, he was able to hold off Muzan's insane regeneration. In the main series, Muzan escaped, so how can Yurichi stop him? Well, what changed here is that Yurichi didn't ask Muzan any questions. In the original story, Muzan was able to escape because Yurichi decided to ask Muzan a question first. What is the value of life to you? Giving Muzan time to escape by splitting his body into multiple pieces so that he could reassemble his body later and regenerate. In this scenario though, Yurichi knows what's at stake and was thinking to himself that he may never get another chance like this. He decides to finish off Muzan immediately after bringing him down, not giving the Demon King even just a second to think. After the Muzan was killed, all of the demons that were created through his blood died, giving everyone peace that they deserve. And since there are no more demons left to destroy, Yurichi retires from the Demon Slayer Corps and lives a peaceful life with his family just like how he always wanted. Now what if Yurichi becomes Tanjiro's father and teaches him the sun breathing technique himself? By then, only the sun breathing technique has been discovered, so the other breathing techniques are yet to exist. How would the scenario play out this time? Well, Yurichi is still an amazing swordsmith, but would not join the Demon Slayer Corps until later in the story. Everything begins in the part where Tanjiro would go sell charcoal to a nearby town, but this time, he is accompanying by his father, Yurichi. With both Yurichi and Tanjiro out of the house, what will be the fate of the rest of their family? Well, the same situation would happen to them just like in the original story. When they both come back to their home, they see their entire family slaughtered and the sole survivor, Nezuko, has been turned into a demon. They try to desperately not hurt Nezuko, thinking that she's still their sister slash daughter. Q arrives at the scene to track the monster that attacked their home and sees them trying to capture the demon without killing it. Q decides to intervene and attempts to kill Nezuko, but Yurichi stops Q, giving him a challenge. This shocks Q, given that he was not expecting a random person to be this skilled. How would Gyu respond? Well, Gyu decides to let them keep Nezuko, and he introduces Yurichi to Yubashiki of the Demon Slayer Corps to make Yurichi a Demon Slayer. Yubashiki is impressed with Yurichi's outstanding swordsmanship and makes him an official Demon Slayer. After Yurichi was made a Demon Slayer, he created the first ever breathing technique. He also taught the breathing technique to the Demon Slayers, but since they cannot replicate the sun breathing, they made derivations of their own, again, giving birth to five fundamental breathing styles. 
After doing this, Yurichi would teach Tanjiro the sun breathing technique in order for Tanjiro to also be part of the Demon Slayer Corps. What would this mean for Tanjiro? Well, this would mean that Tanjiro would never learn the water breathing technique and would just have to focus on mastering sun breathing technique. This would also mean that Tanjiro would be the sole successor of sun breathing and would have no trouble defeating demons, and his training would be handled by Yurichi himself, not Rokodaki. This changes Tanjiro's training drastically, making him a very skilled swordsmith early on the series. This is a big change at the beginning of the story, but things would still turn out the same. Tanjiro would still meet Zenitsu and Inosuke on the final selection, and would still have the friendship that we all know and love today, and they would still continue on their adventure together to defeat Muzan. Also, instead of Tanjiro having a hard time against most of his opponents, he would have no trouble defeating them since he's well trained by Yurichi and using the sun breathing technique, and his swordsmanship skills in general. By then, defeating all of the demons until they reach Muzan would be a piece of cake for their father and son duo, because if one sun breathing user was a nightmare for Muzan in the original series, imagine him hearing there's two. Yurichi becoming Tanjiro's dad surely made things a lot more complicated for Muzan. Speaking of Muzan, have you ever wondered how he would do against all of the Hashiras? Well, take a look at our next video!